Hey guys, what's going on? This is always back with another tutorial of Autodesk Revit Extension Training. So in this tutorial, I'll be talking about annotation and text in our drawing. So let's have a look at the text first. So I'm going to go to my annotate tab and here we got text panel, right? So I'm going to select my text by selecting this command. Shortcut key for that is CX. And now I've got to type a text, right? So I'm just going to click here. And now as you can see that it's giving me the, the text box now. So I'm going to type, let's say, ground floor plan. And now one, one thing I want to mention here, you can't press enter spacebar. You need to click on an empty space to finish that command. All right, so we got our text there, right? So I'm going to go and to the properties. And now as you can see, I've got three or four kinds of text here. So I'm going to get like one by four and it's going to get updated as well. So just I'm going to select that to 1 by 4. So 1 by 8 or 1 by 4. So as you can see that now, you can see the type as well. You can even edit the type as well for the text. So we're going to click on edit type. And in this style of us, you change all the settings for your text. Pretty much all these settings are self-explanatory because these are the common um, commands you get in any text editor software. So here you can change line weight. You can change your leaders, text font, text size, table, bold, all that stuff, right? So let's have a look at one more thing here, right? So I'm going to click OK for now. I'm going to change the text to 32 by 50 because this is according to our plan. So I'm going to click that and here you can um, move this text by dragging this vertex and just dropping here. So I'm just going to drop it here, right? And then even you can rotate that if you want to. You can increase the size. And you can apply the text, uh, you can add more text to it. Alright, so I'm just going to drag that backwards. Alright, so I'm going to select this. And now on the modify panel, we've got a few commands here. So the first one command is add a left side straight leader. If you want to add a leader to left side, you click on this. If you want to add to right side, so I'm going to click on right side, right? So I'm going to click on it. Now I've got my leader here. So, Alright, so I'm just going to drag that. And I'm going to click here. I'm just going to drop it here. You can even drag those vertex to just make like look like this. Alright, so let's say I've got another thing here. So I can apply a leader to the left side as well by clicking here. So I've got a leader here as well. Alright, so I'm going to select that again. Here you've got your um, remove last leader. So I can click here and that will remove the last leader what you just made. On the right, you've got some a leader top left right options here. Just later on with them as well. Here you can align your text center left right and you just want to keep that to the left. Spelling checking is there, final replacing is there. Alright, so now we're going to look at some more features here. I'm just going to go and add another text. I'm just going to click here and I'm going to type brick wall. See, when I press enter, it actually starts a new line. So I'm just going to press backspace and then click on empty space. So now I'm going to apply add leader to it. So I'm going to apply a leader, click on the modify command, select that, and now you get that leader command. So I'm just going to drag the vertex there, right? Alright, let's have a look at a few more settings here. I'm just going to click on this text, and on the left in the properties panel, you've got your edit type, alright? So here I've got my color of the text, I can change the color of the text, line weight. I'll show you background options in a second. So you got your leader border size and you can click on here and I'm going to select arrow health fill 20 degrees, right? I'm just going to click apply. Now, as you can see that if I zoom in a little bit, as you can see that our leader arrow has been changed. All right. So now I'm going to go to my elevation plan. The one thing I want to mention here that any text you add here in this plan will stay here. You can't see those text in any other level or any other elevation or any other plan. So I'm going to go to my south elevation now and I'm going to text here. I'm just going to drop the text about right here, right? So I'm going to change the type to 1 by 8 inch. So I'm going to type brick wall. Click on an empty space to finish that command. And now as you can see that we've got some white background covering our text. So I'm going to go to my edit type and here I've got options here background. So I'm going to change that to transparent and I'm going to apply. As you can see that we updated our text so there is no background for the text anymore. So that's how you can apply text to your drawing. It's pretty basic and simple. So we're going to look at dimension now. 
I'm gonna go back to my level one floor plan and here I'm gonna apply some dimensions to it. I've got a few dimensions here, I'm just gonna get rid of them. And all right, so now in annotate tab you've got this whole dimension commands here. You've got aligned linear angular and all these commands. You can explode this command by yourself, it's not very hard. It just does this radial diameter, arc length, all that stuff here. They're all pretty much self-explanatory. So I'm gonna select align command. And we're gonna just zoom into this room, right? So if I hover over my cursor to this wall, as you can see that it's selecting that wall. The reason why it's selecting the whole wall because on this option bar, you got uh, pick point is the entire wall. So I'm gonna select that individual reference, right, for now. And I'm gonna get that as the wall center line. So if I hover over my cursor now, it's gonna select the center line of the wall. So if you wanna select the face, you can press tab, tab, and then click. All right, so now, I'm going to click on this line because it's selecting the center line. So I'm going to press tab again and press tab again. And I'm going to click here. So the catch here is basically if I go back and then just click on this uh, highlight little line, what it's going to do, it's going to remove that and it's not going to let me draw my dimensions. So I'm going to click here one time and show you how you do it. So a lot of people make mistakes here. They go back and they click again, which will uh, remove that um, vertex for this dimension. So I'm going to come to the middle and I'm just going to click here on the empty space. So that's how you can apply the dimensions, right? So to make sure that you don't, you don't click on the same highlighted wall. All right, so let's apply some more dimensions. I'm going to select this wall now. So it, by default, it's selecting that wall center line. So you can change that option permanently. You can go here and change that to wall faces, center of core, faces of core. So I'm going to select the wall faces now. I'm going to click on here and then it's going to start a dimension for me. And I'm gonna drop a dimension and I'm gonna click here. So that's how you apply dimensions. So let's have a look at a few more things here. The dimension. I'm gonna click on the modify command. I'm gonna save the project. I'm gonna select this. All right. So if you click on the text, it's gonna pop up this dialog box where you can actually change the value of the dimension. You can replace this with the text. All right. And you can apply some more text on the above. And I'm gonna keep that as a actual value. I'm gonna apply. And I'm going to click OK. So if I click on this vertex, I can move that text wherever I want. And if you take your text a bit away, what it's going to do, it's going to try making a leader to it. So as you can see that we got the line here. So that line represents that that text links to this dimension, right? OK, so one more thing here. If you unlock that, it's not going to be able to change that. You can't be able to change or move any text anymore, right? So I'm just going to select and unlock that, all right? Okay, so let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this as well. I'm going to select my align command again and let's try some multiple dimension now. First, what I'm going to do, I'm going to select my whole drawing. I'm going to filter that and I'm going to click on check none and select walls, apply, okay. And I'm going to change my walls to 8 inch generic. Alright, that's pretty simple now. Okay, so let's apply some multiple dimensions now. I'm going to zoom in here, select my align command. I'm going to select from this line. As you can see that, it's selecting from the wall faces now. So I'm going to select this wall face. And I'm going to drag my vertex all the way here. I can apply that dimension here. Or I can apply a dimension wherever I want. So I'm just going to click here. It's going to keep going. As long as I can go, it's going to keep applying that dimension. So I can just keep going, right? So that's one way you can apply multiple dimensions, right? So I'm going to show you this quick trick where you can apply multiple dimensions by just one click, all right? So let's go to select our align command. And now I'm going to select my wall face. And here I'm going to change that to entire wall, all right? So I'm going to select this wall. And as you can see that it's actually applying the multiple dimension. It's going to calculate wherever it needed to be a dimension, so it's going to apply that. That's so easy, right? Okay, so we got that. I'm going to change the text to it, so I'm going to click on text, which will give you the same dialog box to change the dimension or replace with the text. Or I can move the text away. It's going to start drawing a leader to it. So it should go a bit far, so it's going to... All right, all right so we have done our dimensions. Let's have a look at a few more features of the dimension, all right? So I'm going to go here and I'm going to select the align command again. And let's say I want to apply the dimension from here, right? So it's selecting the whole wall now. I can press tab to change that to wall faces. 
so I don't have to go all the way there to change that to individual faces. Alright, so I'm going to apply a multiple dimension now. I'm going to select this face. I'm going to select this face. And I'm going to make sure that it's changed to entire wall. I'm going to drop that here. It's going to... Okay, so I've got my dimension. If I go to option bar, so here you've got two options. You can select openings, centers, or width, intersection wall. You can even add intersection wall to it. So if I delete them, let's say apply another one from this wall to this wall. So this is basically the same kind of dimension, right? But as you can see that it's adding a lot more. You've got all your basic commands here. You, right, this is how you can apply dimension to your file, which is pretty easy. Linear, what it does basically, it places horizontal or vertical dimension only. It's not going to do, let's say if I make a wall here, I'm just going to draw a random wall with the angle right. And I'm going to go and select my annotate with the align. And I'm going to select this entire wall. It's going to apply the 16 feet. It's going to give me the length of it. Well, what if I select the linear command, if I'm going to try to select that. Now, as you can see, the dimension is different. It only works with a horizontal and vertical axis. Alright, so this is a radial dimension. Placing the dimension that may use the radius of an inner curve. Diameter is just to apply dimension to diameter. Arc length and all that stuff. Just explore them. These are not very hard to understand. Now I'm going to show you a very simple feature in Revit. Go to your annotate tab and here on the symbol panel you got the symbol command. So this is very simple, uh, simple straightforward command which places a 2D annotation drawing symbol in a current view. So I'm going to click on it and now in that properties you've got two, three kinds of um, symbols here. Center line, north arrow. So you want to apply a north arrow to your drawing. So you can do that. Well you can rotate after you made that symbol from using this rotation command and there you go you got option on a option panel as well. Rotate after placement. So I'm gonna click on it, I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna give this arrow. So this is basically applying a symbol. So as other objects you can load the family here as well. So I'm gonna click on it and let's say I'll go to my US Imperial annotation and I've got a lot of symbols available here. As you can see these are all symbols available. You can bring them in and just apply them. This is very straightforward and simple command. So you can apply them, you can use them, just play around and explore this symbol. What are these? So just want to show you that you can apply symbols. Right now we've got only center line and north arrow symbol available in our Revit project. Now I'm going to show you how you can add legend view to your project. If you like to add a legend to your project, perhaps showing each kind of a door or window, you need to use within elevation view or some node indication, its construction or its function. There's no need to draw this manually. A legend view in Revit allow you to place a graphical representation of any family used in your project. You will be able to control scale level of details or you will be able to insert it as either a plan or elevation symbol. And a nice thing about legend views is that these graphics are only representational and so they won't be included in any count in your model. So they won't throw off your tools or anything like that. Alright, so in the project browser, if you look at the legends, you got no legends right now, alright? So you can make legend sheets by right clicking and create a new legend. Or you can go to your view tab and create a legend here. So I'm going to click here. So I'm going to name it doors type, right? And then, there you go. This is basically an empty sheet. If you go to your annotate tab now and here you've got details right so you got components so detail components repeating detail components I'll talk about it in a second but let's have a look at the legend component so if I click on it and now I can drop doors so what is this coming from is basically if I click on components and if I go to my this list these are all the components of my whole project so whatever object I used in my drawing, it's available here. As you can see that I've got my planting tree and all that stuff. So you can use uh, these objects and just... So I'm going to go and select my component command again, legend components, right? So here I can change that view to elevation. So now anything I select now from the list will be as elevation. So chair desk, that's the desk here, desk here. And let's try one more time. 
gonna go and select something like let's say a door right so this is a door we have here now I'm gonna drop one here I'm gonna select it and now you can just scale it align it mirror it all those basic commands you can do with it all right so this is basically adding legend sheets and you can use this object in your legend sheet all right all right guys thanks for watching this tutorial and i'll talk to you guys in the next video make sure to subscribe and if you like this video give this video a thumbs up and i'll talk to you guys in the next video cheers